If you want to learn how to animate your very own creature with wings, then this may be the video for you. But before we jump into the animations, I just want to take you through the rig here on the right for a brief moment. At the very core of it all, we have a torso. The torso segment here is the upper body and everything else is connected onto that torso, as you can tell by the hierarchy structure below. We have the head at the front, we have the wings on the side, and we also have the back at the very far and the rear. And at the end of the back, I went the extra mile to add some definition through applying the extra wing segments to the tail that allows me to spread it apart and bring it together depending on what type of act the bird is taking in the air. The reason to why we started taking a look at the rig is because a rig is essential to when you want to try to pose out a creature and figure out exactly what type of movements it will be able to do. It's also very important as you're modeling your creature that you account for what you want to be able to do with your animations even before you have started making the animations. In my case, sometimes what I like to do is to break the model apart and actually start animating one of the sides even before the model is done. So I can get an idea if the movement is allowed in the way that I'm modeling it. Psst. Do you also like cool stuff? Check it out on my Patreon. But okay, let's jump into some actual flight. What type of flights can a bird normally perform? Well, we all know it can glide. And if I play this animation, there is nothing really to it. This was the way they was modeled in the beginning. And it sort of works if you just want to have it look like it's gliding through the air as a bit of a spike, I guess. But sure, you can work with this. But if you want to take that glide to the next level, what you can do is to apply a little bit of swing to the animation. And let's take a look at what I've done here. So I've gone in and I've taken the torso segment, just this torso in the middle, and I've started bobbing it back and forth, left to right, just slightly just slightly and there's a little bit of speed decrease to it some of you who are used to animating a block bench since before you may notice that i'm not using smooth frames i think it's essential that you learn to animate with the linear ones first before you start using the smooth ones sometimes you will be forced to work with linears and it's just good that you have that knowledge with you as you're working then what you can do in the next step is to actually apply a bit of panning to the left and to the right. So if I now were to deselect the body and click on the next animation I have going here, you'll see that I've added panning to the left and to the right, which also uses that little extra rotation that I had on the center body. If you go back to the torso, you can see that all the rotation is still there. But I've also done is to pose it from one side to the other side and then back again to the first side so that it's a nice tidy loop. As we're about to jump into the next animation, notice that I've brought down the speed to 70 instead of 100% playback speed. This is so I can easily show you and you can also clearly see what the next animation is going to do for a difference on the panning left to right on this animation. So keep an eye here at the position timeline and also at the movement at every time it reaches left and right sides. So if we take a look at that, now you can see that I've added a few extra keyframes. If you are using, for example, smooth frames, this is also sort of done automatically using that setting, but I don't. And this is something that I want people to learn more about, using keyframing with smaller increments and decrements just before an actual peak of an event or a movement so that you can simulate the idea of a stopping force and a break instead. Because sometimes you will be forced to do this. It's easy to do it with graphs, Thus, learning the hard way can be beneficial as you're developing your animation skills. So, up to this point, we have animated a rotation to the torso that makes it look like it's flowing on top of the air slightly. We've also added a positional movement so that it's actually panning left to right. And we've added some stopping power with the keyframes so that it breaks whenever it reaches the pinnacle of movement left to right. Next up is to add a bit of rotation to the body so that the creature is somewhat also always facing in the direction it's actually going because right now it's facing somewhere here facing somewhere here we want that to be more direct in the direction it's actually trying to get around through the air remember birds and creatures are like they usually know where they're going so if we add that extra rotation if we take a look at the torso again you will not see too much of that movement in here but all i've essentially done is that in this keyframe space at number one here here's where i've added some extra rotation to the body it's still throughout these frames and then some rotation and then to this rotation right here. And what does that give us? Well, it gives us a focus. We can now see that if I hold my cursor about here, the, the bird is almost focusing our cursor. Instead, 
of focusing at just this horizon at the very far distance. It has a bit more definition to where it's trying to go in the air. Then, of course, depending on where we face the head and so on, which we'll get to, then we can continue increasing that perception throughout the movement. All right, so now we have this movement left to right. We have a bit of inwards rotation. There is something lacking, something very clearly lacking, and that is the idea that this bird, remember this one, like the bird is actually flying in the air. It's compensating for air all around it. So in a sense, it's almost like it's sliding through the air, right? And that we can simulate with some more rotation to the edges of the movement, left to right, and also with a bob up and down. So we can kind of imagine, if you take a look at the blue line here in the back, it's almost a bit slide-shaped like this. It goes up and it goes down in the center and it goes up on the other side of it. And we can compensate and add more rotation to the body this way. But this gives that flowing feel some more nuance. Right now, if we were to take a look at this, it's actually not a bad flowing animation. Like This could work for anybody who wants to go with a fast and more simplistic approach to an actual glide animation for a bird. But now it wouldn't be fair of me not to show you how to take that glide to the next level, because right now we have some extra movement. But from this point on, it's also going to be meticulous. Here you need to actually see and fundamentally feel the creature, how the air flows around it. Let's take a look at what I did with this one. I spanned the wings out a bit. I've added some uh, torrential through the air itself. You can see here how the wigs are kind of compensating for how that blows through them, how the movement is compensating with some follow through. It's almost like the swing in action going through the body of pan out the fans on the back and had them also bob along with the air. And this type of definition to the movement is a bit hard to teach out because I can show you what I've done here, but to get you to understand it, you actually kind of have to look at birds and feel the air. Imagine you yourself soaring through the air, take your fingers, spread them out and just feel the air across them. Feel how it lifts up and touches in different places and try to imagine what a bird would feel like, how their wings would be lifted with an airflow around you. Go out on a windy day. It's one of the best ways to do it. Grab a piece of paper. Take a look at how the paper bends in different angles. What kind of behavior it has when the winds are changing. That's really good. But let's jump into the flapping animations in the next segment of the video. So here we are, the regular flap animation. Many people would be happy doing just this, have something go up and down at a regular pace. If we take a look at the actual wing itself, you can see it goes up and it goes down and it goes up and it goes down in a linear curve. If we added smooth curves instead, mm, sure, we could get the moment to break a little bit back and forth, but not overall super exciting. How do we get flap animations to become more eccentric? Well, one way to do that, if you take a look at the naming convention I have, I've called this one No Muscle Flap. But let's just talk briefly about the follow through. It's a very important animation principle. I try to focus it down all the times because follow through means that when the motion is started on one end, it has to carry across like waves on water till the end of the line of motion. And follow through in this case could look a bit like this. I've added only follow through to the segment on the second part of the wing. So if I select that, we actually have the very same movement sort of as the initial wing, but it starts slightly later. This frame right there is not the start of the movement. This is the start of the movement. And the movement goes up. And as the pinnacle of the movement of the main wing is about to turn, this wing actually continues to turn upwards and then starts going back downwards like that. This creates the simulated effect that it kind of bends a bit follows along and there's a reason to why the expression is called follow through because the motion starts here it follows through the different limbs all the way out to the very peak so let's jump and take a look at the final one where we also added the tip of it so now the tip is also long in the follow through and here you can see that the timing sort of hmm it doesn't really help the movement out if i were to slow that down it's like really that's a very flimsy tip. It doesn't follow along in a helpful way to the wing, right? It's almost like it's trying to grab the last minute train to somewhere. One way you can fix that is by actually taking the outer wing segment like that and pulling all of the keyframes slightly closer to the other ones. Then of course also compensating with your final keyframe. But the movement in this regard is a bit more tensed up. Because as it turns here, take a look at that, 
it makes slightly more sense with the exaggeration in the movement. But then again, this is supposed to be a linear, non-muscle type of animation. Now, what happens when you add a slight bit of muscle mass to the movement? Well, it actually gives you some muscle definition, but also kind of a force to work with. In this case, all I've done is that I've brought down the movement from being completely linear up and down to make one part of the cycle slightly faster, that of the downwards movement of the wing. This creates the illusion that the wing is actually being pulled down with higher force, which essentially makes a bit of sense to the creature itself, because it would push it upwards in a more manageable fashion when that force is applied. But you could also do it in an inverted style, where the upwards motion is the faster and the downwards motion is the slower. Now, I don't know exactly where this would be beneficial, maybe when you're swimming, but then again, when you're swimming, you're also trying to go to the other side, like you're not going, you're trying to stay at the surface. You know, it's interesting to think about regardless, but yeah, it's there. So we'll go back to the flap once again, it's slightly faster on the downwards movement. Here again, I decided to add follow through to the middle segment. And you can see that even here, it has that little extra tension to it. The middle segment also carries the same type of tension as the initial wing movement. And that's kind of nice. Gives it that bit of a slow pace, but it's still quite nicely pan out movement to it. And then at the very end of it, we also animate it fully with the end segment of the tip along with it. So we have the full movement like that. It kind of stops at the bottom as well to give room for bringing the wings up with full power and then pushing down with more force and then bringing them up with full power, then pushing them down with full force. Think of how the different muscle masses are working on a creature like this. There's a muscle mass on this end that pulls the wing upwards and there's a muscle mass on the bottom side that drags the wing down, that pushes the body up. One can ask which is stronger. I don't know. I haven't really thought too much of that but it's something that is worth having in mind as you're building your animation. And so, from a non-muscle flap, through a tension flap, through a flap that has full follow-through and tension to it, when does it become dynamic? Well, it's as easy as this, just like when we were working on the glide animation and we started to add a bit of break and turn, the movement to the sides, instead of just the panning panning where it linearly came to a close and then started moving in the other direction, we add a bit of braking power, stopping power to each side. We can do that as well with a flap, a bit like this one right here. It flaps down and we can apply that little extra motion to the main tension flap right there by creating something called a dynamic flap. And the dynamic flap is essentially the very same as the non-tension flap, it's just that it has braking to each side. It stops a bit before and it increases a bit as it's about to. Quite nice, right? And then of course, as with everything, when you've made your dynamic flap, you'll have to bring that on top of the entire creature. As you may notice with these animations, I was also a bit cheeky and just animated one wing because it's easy to convey the information that way. But now let's take a look at the full body with a full dynamic flap. Here I've taken all the different segments that I thought were relevant to animate, not the head just yet, because we do have a final animation to show in a second, but where all pieces are kind of compensating, I'm trying to think of how different muscle masses across the body are compensating for movement and trying to bring movement across. This 50% playback speed is not helping me out. Let's pull that up to like 100. And see how that motion comes across. Look at that. Beautiful and pretty, but how is it actually made? Well, like we said here with the follow through and the motion of the wings, I don't have much going on for the inner wing segment because I'm using all of the moment to be done on this right wing segment, the one that actually rotates outwards initially. The one I spoke of in the beginning of the video, and if you didn't see that, feel free to jump back and take a look at that once again, because it's nice to know how the rig is built. You pull them up like so, we have the motion going downwards. This is the braking power right here, and this is the braking power at the very end. These two frames right there that catches up the movement. Then we have the same thing with the right wing. This is where the movement starts. And this is the this is the peak of the movement upwards. And then again, as it's about to come back in on itself. No braking to this one though, because the main braking is already done on the wing. So I can sort of just compensate for the visual of the braking on the other segments. And that the very final one, sort of the same here. It is, like I spoke about earlier, we can move the movement closer in the timeline and thus create a less snappy or a less follow-off effect. Now we actually 
have a progression that feels consistent with the overall flow on the wing. As it's about to turn, here it actually grabs and starts taking the force of the air from below, push against that, and inwards. And here there becomes a small kind of vacuum effect almost, which pulls the tips inwards, and also the weight of the air, and then up again, and then inwards, and you get the full motion of the wing. Then I started to try to think, how would the actual tail behave in this regard? I mean, sure, I could have done more with the posing and stuff, but I just wanted to be able to pat that apart. But the tail motion, this one right here, there are two segments of clear tail motion that goes through. It's this part and this part. I also believe I maybe added some extra motion to the tip wings. Maybe I did that in the final. Well, I'll take a look at that in a second. But we have this motion right here. And I started thinking this way. When the wings are fully brought down, this is where these muscles are now kind of letting go of the wings and the back muscles are pulling them back up again. So back muscles pulling them back up. Okay, what if I make the back turn inwards a bit as if the muscle mass here pulls some extra muscles over here as well. So we get a bit of muscular tension inwards eh, just for a brief second, yeah, like that. Pulls the wings back up and up and it relaxes the muscles on the back and as it does that, it's about to come in and tense the muscles to pull the wings back down. It's kind of preparing the body for it. And there we go, the muscles on the inside are pulling back down. It's now letting go because that force has already been built up. It's coming to a pause we can do that proper, like yeah. pulling that in. The tail goes back up again to relax state where it can then compensate and meet the actual force at the top. Where once again, the muscles would tense together to bring the wings back up. So that's sort of how I approached that motion. And knowing about muscle masses and bodies helps you really understand your animations. Now let's take a look at the final animation, the one you saw in the beginning of this video. And let's just discuss slightly what more I added to it. Now I reckon that you did not know that the actual truth behind proper flight animations is that all birds are essentially shrimp or fish, or at least at the very core of it. If you approach the body like a fish swimming through water, you could almost imagine this kind of wavy water going through. You can see the follow through in the body as well, creating this wave effect. Then you're halfway there with your goals because the birds are sort of the fish of the sky and the fish are sort of the birds of the water. And in between you find the dolphin jumping over the water surface and us human beings doing whatever we do in the water. But yeah, we enjoy it as well. Now I'm not sure that I kind of segued off a little bit from the benchmark of whatever. Let's go back to the content. If I bring the wings up here, left and a right wing like so, you can now tell the weight of the body is being presented, how it's falling down and all of that, how it's catching it back up and pushing it forward. Like I think this bird came out really, really well. But now I want to know what you thought. Do let me know down in the comments below what I should make for the next type of animating something that flies video. If you enjoy the video, then of course leave a like down below. It helps me out immensely. And if you aren't already a subscriber of the channel, then, well, I mean, it's YouTube. You know where to find the click button, right?